Romans chapter 5. Therefore, in what we already learned in chapter 4, we're continuing. Therefore, being justified by faith. We've been talking about Abraham with his great faith before the law, before the circumcision, before works. What God said, and the belief by man. Therefore, being justified, I am just by faith. And that's a kind of remarkable statement because later on we're going to read, I forget who writes about it. But they say that a particular man in the Bible that you would not think was just, and that man is named Lot, and the Bible says just Lot. Justification comes by your belief in what God said. We have peace. That's the result. With God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know why an idiot would stand on the street corner? Where's the peace? Where's the peace? Where's the peace? He's got no, he has no justification by the faith in Jesus Christ. Because once you're justified, once you become a child of God, then you get the fruit of the Spirit, and one of them fruit is the peace. By whom also Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith, note that word again into this grace wherein we stand so my standing is in the faith that i believe god at his word and i got the grace i got the justification and it's all through jesus christ and rejoice in hope of the glory of god and not only so but we glory in tribulations also now, where would you get the idea that you would teach your congregation that once they get saved, all their troubles and trials and all that would be over with? And not only so, rejoicing in hope that God has saved me. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. You mean now that I'm saved, I'm going to get more tribulations if you do right? Also, knowing that tribulation work is patience. And I've heard many preachers say, well, don't pray for patience because patience, it, it comes by tribulation. So you wouldn't want to pray for that. Yeah, but don't you want to be one with God? Don't you want to grow as a Christian? And to grow as a Christian, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So if you don't want God to work on your patience, which he uses tribulation, you're not going to grow. Because with patience, experience. And experience, hope. There's a ladder of God's success. It starts off with faith in what he said. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. What is the, what is the next step? We're justified by Jesus Christ. By our faith. What's the next step? We have peace. What's the next step? Grace. Rejoicing. Tribulation. Patience. Experience. Hope. So when you get into this, this uh, loop over and over and over, you get tribulations. You get patience. You get experience. You get hope. And when it comes back around, you get more tribulations. You get more uh, uh, patience. So the next time you get tribulations, you're going to have a little more patience. And with the patience that you learn with the tribulation you get, you're going to get more experience. And the more experience you get by the loop, you get more hope. So you get down the road. If you've grown in the Lord, you get trials and tribulations. And you say, you know, hey, you know what? God took care of me before. He's going to take care of me now. You come a long way from Christian growth. Like, huh! i got to run away from that trouble. i got to run from that problem. I can't handle it. I've got a thing right now with my foot, and my foot is, is swollen. I don't have a job, and it's like, Lord, there's nothing I can do. It relies totally on you, and I've still got a little impatience. God's got to work that. And I get experience that, hey, God will take care of me. And the hope, hope maketh not ashamed. What's the shame? That 
in your trials and tribulations as a Christian, you don't freak out. You don't run to a doctor for pills. You don't run to alcohol. You don't run to tobacco. You don't run to anybody but God. And that's the level of growth. The seven results of justification. And there's a pattern to it. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God I mean, tribulation, that's the love of God. And that's the thing I, I'm dealing with right now. As a Christian, as the advanced age I am as a Christian, I look around and there's many other Christians I'm praying for and they are suffering. And I got to say, God, you love us. God, you, we are your children. God, would you as our father, would you with all power allow us to be doing it? And it comes back to it's our sin. It's our own fault. And God, you know, still you have the power and yet sin. And many of our troubles and faults and troubles are based upon what we have done. And even with the Satan working on me and stuff like that, hey, I know God loves me. And if it's not going to be taken care of in this planet right now, I know he'll take care of it by giving me a new body. Where did I learn that from the scripture? Who said I was going to get a new body? God, there's another faith aspect in my life. And there's more hope. There's more peace that I'm going to get a better, newer body one day. I haven't seen it yet. And with that, God says, just keep going. Just keep going. I know you don't understand. I know you don't know what's going on. Just keep going. And sometimes even I fight against that. But well, Lord, I'm supposed to be working. Just keep going. For when we were yet without strength. Remember that was one of the strongest that we read last night about uh, Abraham. He, had, he was strong in the faith. Even though when we were without strength. A lost man cannot have faith in God. There is no strong. There is no strength. In faithlessness you cannot have faith in God believing in idols believing in religion whatever you're believing in that's not Jesus Christ and you can't even have strength in a Christ that's not Jesus because Paul has told us there's another Jesus there's another gospel there's another spirit when we were without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly what is the due time? That Passover night at 6 p.m., approximately 33 A.D., Jesus Christ died. No sooner, no later. That was God's due time. We're going to get on with Romans, and we're going to see something that God has. We've already seen the word now. God is very patient. Why didn't Jesus Christ die after Joshua settled on them all in the land, they got their lots, they got in the land. Why didn't he die for their sins right then and there? Because God said that's not the due time. Why has the rapture not happened by now? Because it's not due time. It's not due time. God has a time. Okay. Salvation was wrong six. Now, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. All right, uh, I, I'm racking my brain about an illustration like this. I, I'm not nobody important, but if I go preaching on the street, Daytona Beach, at the farmer market, and somebody comes up with a gun and, and it's going to threaten my life, I doubt anybody out of that farmer's market is going to come up and take that bullet from me. Someone might even encourage the guy, and I'm not laughing. No one stood up for Jesus to take his place. Notice that. No one stepped aside and said, Stephen, relax. You're a good preacher. Let me take the beating. Yet, peradventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. And there's your heroes. Well, my, I had a friend in Vietnam. He took a grenade for me and I survived because of him. But you see, in verse 7, we could stay all night in this one. Righteous versus good. People say they're a good man. 
But do you realize your good is not good enough to be righteous? Did you get that? There's a difference between a righteous and a good man. What's the righteous man? No one wants to be around. Nobody would do anything for you. What's a good man? I'll do anything, even including death for you. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, there's a common cause of man, Christ died for us. Whether, well, the Bible says there's none good. The Bible says I'm not righteous unless I have Christ's righteousness. So what am I? I'm a sinner. A sinner goes to hell. Christ came and died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures that I, if I believe on him, may not go to hell. He died and took my place. Much more than being now, present tense, justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. What's the wrath of God? John says the very last verse in John chapter 3, the wrath of God is hell. How do we get out of the wrath of God? We've got to, have to be justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. What is the justification? Our faith that God's word said, believe on Jesus Christ. With that, again, we go through, we get the peace, we're justified, our faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ, who is our only atonement, gets us away from the wrath of God. Through him, no works. Chapter 4 and 5, there's anything you get, it's not works, it is faith. Faith in what? Today, now, Jesus Christ. For if, when we were enemies... And we were enemies of, of God. We were enemies of the law. We were reconciled, brought back to God by the death of his son. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What is reconciled is when two parties are at odds at difference. God is holy. I am a sinner. You can't get a sinner to God, and you can't get God to a sinner. No way. Unless Jesus Christ steps down in the flesh, the virgin birth, and goes to that cross, and becomes the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, and you believe that, then now you have reconciliation to God by the Son. And I'm saved by Jesus Christ, the merit of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. That's what gets God and me back together. So when you say, God hates the sin, but loveth the sinner, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if we, when we were enemies, that doesn't sound good, we were reconciled by God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. How can you say God would love the sinner if he won't even get together with a sinner? Abraham told that rich man in hell, hey, listen, there's a good big gulf between us. We can't go there and you can't come here. There's a big gulf that's between God and, and mankind. It's called sin. You can't stretch that gulf unless you go by Jesus and the gospel. If you don't go through Jesus, you're a sinner. God does not love you. Because you have rejected his only son and the sacrifice that God has meant to be our salvation. Is the Lord Jesus, God's going to love you? No. Absolutely not. John 3.16, that love is past tense. You know why God loves me today? I'm still a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. You know why he loves me? Because Jesus Christ reconciles him and me together. And the Bible says that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now praying. The blood is actively working in my life. 1 John 1, 9. 
no one's saved. God is still holy. If I sin, I, that separates the love of God to me. Does it separate my family? I'm still a son. If a father has a son that's violent in drugs and prostitution and always getting arrested, always being in jail, living on the worst side of town, even that prodigal son, the father stayed right where he was. It took the son to come back. Repenting. Brought the re reconciliation of the father and the son by that son saying, listen, I'm sorry. And not so only, and not only so, not just a reconciliation, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Ephesians 2.18 and Galatians 2.16. It's all on Jesus Christ. So you ask somebody, how are you saved? The church, that ain't the answer. How are you saved? Baptism. That ain't the answer. How were you saved? I ate Jesus. That ain't the answer. The answer would be Jesus Christ. How? What about Jesus Christ? He died for my sins. He was buried. He rose again. That's the gospel. And I put my faith and trust in him. Now, don't let somebody come to you. Well, Jesus Christ, the gospel. Well, what'd you do about that? I got baptized. No, no, no. Baptism is an afterthought. The, the Ethiopian eunuch. Remember that part of the Bible they removed? They removed the confession that he believed Jesus is the Son of God? You better believe that Jesus Christ in the finished work. There's been no baptism here. There's been no church attendance. You see how important your faith is? You better have your faith in the gospel of Jesus or you're not saved. For with the heart, man believes on the righteousness. All right, now here we go. Adam and Jesus Christ. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Well, who would that be? That'd be Adam. Notice how it says the man and not the woman. He was the husband of Eve. He should have put her in her place. So it's charged to him. And death by sin. The wages of sin is death. And so death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. Since Adam minus Jesus Christ. No one is still living from any of those ages. There's not a person today you can go to and speak to. Of the Old Testament. Of the time of Jesus Christ. They're, they're all dead. I read the other day that there's somebody that's 117 years old right now. All right, so you've got to go back at least 117 years to find someone who has not died yet. And that person will die. Death brings sin. Sin brings death. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. You had to tell God, you had to have God tell you. But then again, we got that conscience. Abimelech knew it was wrong to be with another man's wife. We even saw Cain had a kind of little backlash with God about his brother after he was dead. Nevertheless, death reigned. Death is a king. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. The law came by Moses. So Moses and John the Baptist are kind of particular fellows because Jesus said the law was unto John. From John to Acts 2.13 when Jesus Christ is death buried and rose again. We don't know what kind of salvation there was because there was the Messiah. So nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, disobeying God. Disobeying the word of God. Abraham believed the word of God. We believe on the word of God. Adam, was the sin of eating the fruit 
the sin? No. God told him not to eat the fruit. He disobeyed the word of God. That's the sin. Who is the future, uh, excuse me, the figure of him that was to come? Jesus Christ. Adam had a direct revelation. Moses had a direct revelation of that coming. When God shed that animal's blood to clothe Adam and Eve, that was a sign of Jesus Christ, the blood. We know with, with Bible, you study the Bible, we know it was a lamb that shed its life for Adam and Eve. What would that picture? That picture Jesus Christ. What did Moses tell those people before they got the law of coming out of Egypt? Shed a lamb, the Passover lamb. You're going to do this every year. You're going to do. You're going to remind your children of it. Why? It'll show you the Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. But not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one Adam, many be dead. Now, why is he saying many? Well, there's people in Rome still alive, but they're going to die. He's alive. He's going to die. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, Romans 6, 23, which we haven't studied yet, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul speaking about a gift of God. Evidently, he must have been preaching the gift of Jesus Christ because he's already spoken about this gift before the verse we quote. The gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many, not all. So Adam has given us death. Thank you, Adam. Jesus Christ has given us life. Adam has passed on to all, including Jesus Christ, death. But Jesus Christ Many will not die. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Much will die. So Adam gives us death. Jesus Christ gives us life. Adam, everybody died. Jesus Christ, not all of us are going to. There's going to be coming a time when the rapture happens. There are going to be Christians who will not die at all. First Thessalonians 4. They'll never taste death. You can't say that in Adam. So, if there was no Jesus Christ, we all be dead and going to hell, according to Romans 5. There would be no justification, there would be no faith, there would be no blood, we'd just be going to hell. Pick a God, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you burn, and burn, and burn, and burn. But Jesus Christ, and not as it was by one that sinned, Adam, so is the gift, Jesus, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. That free gift is Jesus. Jesus died for all sin. Anybody, everybody that's in Adam can come to Jesus. So if there are aliens out there, can they be saved? No. They're not of Adam. What if an angel, what if a fallen angel comes down and says, you know what, I, I, I really seem to say, I don't want to, I want to get saved. He can't. He's not of Adam. Angels can't get saved. Once an angel falleth, Jew says, it's it. He's ever less in chains of darkness for his entire longevity. Angels don't understand about the, the, the sons of Adam. Something special about those sons of Adam that God came down and died for us. 
even after how many pay, how many books have we been in so far that all man has done is rebel, 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 rebel. There has not been one perfect man but Jesus Christ, and yet God still gave us Jesus Christ and still reaches out in long suffering that you get right. One sin brings condemnation. The salvation, many offenses. Come to, come to Jesus as a kid who stole a cookie. Come to Jesus as a man on death row has, has killed many people and eaten their bodies and raped many women and just destroyed. And he still gets saved. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, Adam. Much more, they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Oh, wait a minute. Through Adam, King Death, in Jesus Christ. I get to reign. I become a king. First, I mean, Revelation chapter one. And it's all by Jesus Christ. I, this body may die before the rapture, but absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'm alive. When a Christian, when anybody dies, they're not dead. They're living. Their body is asleep, the Bible says. But they're living. Heaven or hell. Based upon what they chosen in their lifetime. Where did they put their faith? Did they put it in Jesus Christ or did they put it in anything else? Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. You die in Adam, judgment, and damnation, condemnation. Read John chapter 3. Even so, by the righteousness of one, see that? You've got to have the righteousness of one. The free gift. That the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's Jesus Christ. Your justification is based upon his righteousness and nothing else. It's either the son or there's nothing. For as one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners. I don't know what that many means because all, all have sinned. But what? So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. All are born of Adam's sins, and since I am born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm no longer under sin, so that's why it says many. I'm still going to die. This body still sins. But as a child of God, my soul and my spirit, they don't sin. Just as flesh. And the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. I am righteous by how? God, Jesus Christ. And that one doesn't say all because not everybody is going to heaven. You can't say all are going to heaven because the Bible says many. That's not all. That's a big difference. Moreover, the law entered. Exodus 20, Moses, that the offense might abound. You're guilty. This law shows you are guilty without an excuse. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Jesus Christ is victorious over sin and death. Jesus Christ is better than the law. So when somebody comes up to you and says, well, I follow the law. Seven-day Adventist and all that. I keep the law. Keep it. Because you know what? Jesus Christ is better than that law. 
And I want to see you drive to church on Saturday when the Bible says you're not supposed to do no work. Do you cook? A, does your wife cook a meal? Now, Baptists, our wives can cook meals on Sunday, but Seventh-day Adventists, you can't. you got to take them out and stone them like that guy who's picking up sticks. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we can sit down and bow our head in the afternoon supper in the Lord where somebody in the law can't do it. And then you find me where the law pays for your sin. You find where you are reconciled to God by that law. And I'll show you why there was in Abraham's bosom. The law was so great that they had to go to Abraham's bosom. They couldn't go to heaven. And I'll show you by the, the, uh, by the grace of Jesus Christ that if I were to die right now, my mom's getting closer and closer to worse with MS, her brain shutting down. If she were to die right now, She's not going to die. She'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That is what grace, that is what the gift of God does to you. You want to be under the law? Fine. You'll die and go to hell. You can't go to Abraham's bosom. It's not there no more. And notice throughout Romans, we're, we're not, and the book says Romans, but he's writing to the Jews. He explained the Jewishness of Jesus Christ, and he's also explained the Gentileness. But it has Jewish flavor. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. You're still guilty, even with the law. So what? But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Where do you see death when you come to grace and righteousness? There is no. So go ahead, take the law. Paul says take the law, you're going to have death. Death reigns by the law. You don't want to die? Put it through the righteousness of Jesus Christ and you get eternal life. Now again, your body may die. But you, your soul, and your spirit will not. And the rapture happens in our time. Boom, you're not dying. And we're going to get the next chapter, Lord willing, the gift of Jesus. It says Romans 6.23. Let's look. The wages of sin is death. Oh, there it is. But the gift of God, what we're reading about in chapter 5, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ, his righteousness, we don't die. We just pass to God. You might be getting electrical shock therapy to get your heart going, and next thing you know, you're seeing holy feet. You might have body function accident as your car stalls on the railroad tracks as that train is coming, and next thing you know, you're looking at holy feet. You may just put your head on the pillow, fold yourself up in the blanket, close your eyes, and you see a marvelous light and holy feet. And yet, a lost man, Luke says, I always forget what chapter it is, I think it's 16. He was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. So even for a lost man, there is no death. But passing from life to God is considered that's eternal life 